Hello, I'm Tracy from MeetRx. I'm a MeetRx coach, and today we're continuing with our success podcast stories. And, to, and we have Katya with us. Hi, Katya. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. And can you start out by telling us some of your background and, and the things that happened to you before carnivore? I will. Yes, it's a long story. Okay, I have a background in uh, natural therapies, studied homeopathy, um, beauty therapy, um, and digestive health. So and I had qualifications in that. Um, I was a lecturer at Hippocrates Health Centre in digestive and colon health. And yeah, I used to do colonics as well. Um, I began my health journey, I guess, around 13 on the quest to have nice, clear skin. I was, uh, you know, like a lot of like teenagers getting acne. And uh, so I just was drawn to these um, health leaders around at that time, um, Paul Bragg being one of them, Pedro Roller, Gallo Hauser that used nature cure, <clears throat> plants, vegetables, Wheat germ was a big thing in those days. And actually, some of them recommended liver, lamb's liver, which was interesting to clear the skin. So I was actually having liver at that time. And it did work. It did clear my skin up. Um, but of course, then I went on to go more with the plants and the you know fruits and vegetables and so forth. So it's always been a quest, part of my life journey, I think, part of my destiny. And even when I was younger, I'd read about cultures that lived... Um, close to nature and, and, you know, forage for fruits and berries and ate in season in particular. And um, so that was, that's what spurred me on. And then it was more for, um, you know, the, the vegetarian um, thing happened. The first, I guess, experience was I had a uh, vegetarian boyfriend when I was about 18 and um, he was vegetarian for ethical reasons um, at that time seal cubbing was very prominent on TV and so forth. And so Bridget Bardot was a big champion for that. So um, that affected him and he decided not to have meat. And uh, so we were having, and the only um, meat substitutes at that time was produced by the Sanitarium Health Food Company, was TVP, uh, textured vegetable protein, nut meats, and these, these soy base, mainly soy. And they had a lot of MSG in them and a lot of chemicals. Um, <laughs> but that's all that was available. So I did actually eat that for a little while, but then, uh, well, you know, I went on and experimented with other diets and, uh, you know, mainly plant-based, but then I did also do um, Atkins and, 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 you know, blood type and all that as I went along. Um, so I guess I did get onto a lot more of the cleansing and juicing and so forth. Um, towards the, uh, I guess, the mid-90s, 90s, and then, um, yeah, David Wolf came onto the scene in the late 90s, and Shazzy, who was a UK raw food uh, guru, I guess, and who started blogging about her experiences with raw food and the transformations visually were just astounding, you know, and, of course, uh, radiant skin and, and beautiful, you know, that, that drew me like a magnet because that was my kind of quest was um, I wasn't an ethical vegan vegetarian. It was for health and beauty and <laughs> looking as good as I could and longevity and all that. So David was the Green Smoothie Revolution with Victoria Botanko. So around that time I was working at Hippocrates and I was, um, as I said, lecturing in detoxing and, and uh, fasting and fruit and vegetable fast. And I certainly saw some amazing transformations with people uh, who come from a sad diet. And, you know, they come in looking tired and worn out. And then a week later, just on three days of juicing um, and then, you know, raw fruits and vegetables, they would look amazing. And people would be reversing conditions, you know, arthritis digestive problems, um, they'd lose weight, um, burnout, chronic fatigue, all kinds of things. Uh, within a week, people had huge, huge changes in how they look visually as well. So, uh, and some people would stay longer, two to three weeks if they had a chronic condition and, and they would heal. Um, so around that time, I 
as I said, David Wolf came on the scene, Victoria Batinko, Gabriel Cousins and Shazzy, that were all these people who decided they wanted to take it further and have it as a lifelong um, lifestyle. I mean, if it works then, why not keep living like that? Why not keep eating that way? So mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, well, that makes sense. <laughs> why not? Um, so I then decided to uh, leave where I was working and open my own raw food cafe uh, in Australia. So it was the first of its kind, and I guess it was considered a bit of a pioneer, way ahead of my time. Um, of course, people were, you know, only just starting to hear, and this is a small percentage of people, of raw foods. Um, but basically mainstream, had no idea. Um, so... I guess I was very, very adamant that I didn't want to have any cooked food in the cafe and I didn't want to have coffee and I didn't want to do this. But, of course, people saying you'll go broke <laughs> in a few months. Well, it lasted about a year. And so, it, to me, I look at it as a costly uh, a, a university degree in learning uh, how to make gourmet raw food and serve it to the public. But those recipes I made went into my books um, that I wrote. I, so I closed the doors and then I went on to do uh, raw food retreats and programs and classes. And at that time, I was starting to get more momentum in um, Australia, US, it was really going off. So there was a lot of people who would arrive and again, overweight, all these different conditions, they feel themselves, they look amazing. The partner I was with at the time, um, he had an incredible transformation. We were in the paper, actually, in the newspaper. Um, he reversed prostate cancer. Um, he looked, he was unrecognisable as the same person, you know, he was 20k overweight, he was in construction and just eating the sad diet, you know, coke and nuts and fast foods and sugar, you know, addicted to sugar and carbs and so forth. And uh, so he had an incredible transformation. And uh, but after about a year, uh, he started to lose the energy that he had gained. Again, his body was, you know, needing now that muscle building uh, animal foods, right? So he did eventually get back to eating some meat, but I was very hardcore, so I just went, went on and on. So, um, and of course, you wanted to ask about how life was before, um, you know, the plant based things started coming on. Do you want me to kind of say that now? <laughs> I can, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Tell me yeah for, well, for the viewers, just to let you know, uh, I'm in my 60s <laughs> um, and I grew up in a time where, you know, saturated fat was encouraged and it, mm -hmm. it was quite normal for us to have, uh, we cooked in lard and that kind of thing. So I grew up in the late mm -hmm. 50s. Um, in the 60s and um, most of our meals consisted of just meat every meal um, mm. except breakfast of course <laughs> the evening meal and maybe lunch even you know some kind of meat and three vegetables and uh, <laughs> it was a kind of a treat you know and, and only in season and same with sweets you know but we didn't see any obesity around you, you there, there was an overweight kid at school it was rare maybe one you know there wasn't the diabetes, there wasn't all that stuff that was going on now in mm -hmm. massive numbers, you know. So it wasn't until the 60s, of course, that we, most people know that that trifecta of flour, oil and uh, sugar came in, which is so addictive for people. But prior to that, um, yeah, um, and I was just going to mention the baby health clinics were also advocating to mothers to uh, feed their, their, their child, their baby, their infants, um, organ meat. So I know as a baby, I had you know, kidney and um, liver. That was just what you did. And lamb shank broths and tripe and organ meat and um, fat. So there was very healthy, rosy cheek babies, you know. <laughs> um, so that's how it was. And uh, of course, things changed rapidly. You know, we didn't know anybody with diabetes in those days either. You know, it was interesting. So I'm very blessed that I have a frame of reference that a lot of people don't, and I'm lucky I can help others who have not lived through those times and think this is just how it's always been, but it wasn't. You know. oh. And also that also um, confirms that animal foods do actually heal us. You know. So oh. uh, I'll get back to my little story on, on my raw food journey. So um, 
So off I went and started my programs and retreats and was writing books um, and uh, had a thriving business going. Actually, had a forum online. There was only one in Australia at the time. The two of us were very up there, you know, the two companies. You know, it's called Raw Juvenate. And so um, obviously I got a bit shocked when I started to lose a lot of energy. At that time I was doing some fasting as well, you know, as part of the detoxing. It was all part of it. But um, I became quite fatigued, really fatigued. In fact, it went on and on. I ignored it to the point where I was looking really pale. But it got to the stage where I couldn't walk down our drive to get the mail without not being able to breathe deeply. And no, no, my muscles were no uh, energy at all in my legs. So uh, my partner got very worried, really worried, and people were noticing. You know, I was not looking good at all. So um, I did go to the doctor, and I had uh, tests for iron, um, and it was something like four. It was just, I was like, he was wondering how I was still walking around. You know? Wow. Mm. Yeah, so he just said straight away, you're not leaving the clinic until you have, um, the tra- you know, iron injections and transitions kind of thing and, and start eating. Oh, no, he said to me, how much red meat do you eat? And I said, no. Mm. <laughs> and he was just shocked, you know. He said, you've got to eat meat for me. Well, I guess I was just so immersed in this business and just in the philosophy of it and I saw the transformations that people were having who'd come and stay with me for they were you know programmed we had a huge home where we do retreats and um, people would come and live in and I saw that and I was convinced that all food um vegan food even if it was cooked food but the time was you know, was um was going to give you the best health ever and eating meat was just horrid it was gonna you know it was rotten your gut and causes all, all kinds of horrid problems parasites and all the rest so um that was the last thing I wanted to do. So I uh, I relented a bit and had some eggs. I had about a dozen eggs over about three days and then I went back to eating more vegan as if it hadn't happened, you know. Um, did feel a little better with the injections, obviously, and maybe the eggs. Um, yeah, yeah. But of course, then the anemia came back. And and then at that time, Tracy, on the market came spirulina. It wasn't available in, in barley grass. And AFA, which is a type of um, algae, and mm. the marketing for that was that it was the perfect replacement for uh, iron. You know, plant, it was a plant-based iron and it was going to supply all your iron needs. So that got me hooked in. I thought, oh, God, that's the solution. Mm. Of course, that wasn't the case because it's not bioavailable, right? Mm. So, again, the anemia came. and uh, But, I, you know, like I said, the, the programming was so extreme and intense so um anyway finally um, my partner and i said the business changed i continued still teaching doing the raw food thing staying up myself uh then i did a crazy thing in 2012 and decided to do fruitarian i thought i'd even go up more levels you know convinced it was going to be more detoxing and and that really uh that was the downfall of a lot of uh, my health and uh, not only that it cost me thousands and thousands in dental work and um, I, I had a lot of resentment over that for a while because I lost two upper molars unnecessarily um, but uh, I've kind of accepted that now my teeth are amazing but what went on was I was getting all these pinhole cavities all along the gum line the dentist thought I was living on candy always. <laughs> and um, I, I was dumbfounded. I'd had them all fixed and then I'd go back and there'd be more. And I'm like, what? You know? So, um, yeah. And, of course, I got addicted to high carb, high sugar, which a lot of vegans do. Mm-hmm. The diet is mostly carbohydrates, right? Lots of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very addictive because you get that sugar high. And... Uh, and you think that's energy, right? Mm-hmm. Little did I got to learn the truth of it. So not only that, I got was pre-diabetic. I was diabetic, you know, it was bad. Insomnia. Um, around my daughter's wedding, um, I had leaky gut. I had this bloated gut. But as soon as I ate something first thing in the morning, it would start. Mm. And, of course, that was just incredible gut damage I had. And as a digestive expert, 
I'm telling, <laughs> I'm having a truckload of supplements and a truckload of things to try and fix it up and it's not working, you know, so it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And actual mm -hmm. fact, I had quite a lot of tests done and I wasn't absorbing minerals. So I think there's an enormous amount of gut damage in my small intestine. Um, maybe not SIBO, but there was, um, you know, pathogenic bacteria there and a lot of inflammation. I actually even got an autoimmune condition that was also the straw that broke the camel's back uh, purely because I'd had an accident and broke my knee and I didn't heal as well. My immune system was really struggling. Um, so I got that and, uh, and then what really uh, ended it all, I think, was I got quite a few signs, which I still was ignoring because I wanted, I wanted to believe it, you know. I wanted to believe veganism was was it, you know, like everyone does. And it's, it's cognitive dissidence and, and it's just, yeah. Um, so I finally got three bouts of food poisoning mm -hmm. and uh, in succession within about six months. And the last one brought me to my knees. I was on the, on the floor crying out, you know, help. You know, God, what am I going to do? I've got so much I want to do and left. And I got my whole body's falling apart, you know. And so I got this very clear message, go eat fish, while I was heaving over the toilet bowl, you know, with this food. <laughs> so I listened. I finally listened because it was so loud. I couldn't ignore it, right? And, uh, and I did. And then I had more. I got told to have more and more. And I could do with fish. And people ask, why do vegans go back and eat fish? Because it, it's the first thing that's more acceptable to them than eating meat. And I think their digestion is often so wrecked. Fish is probably a bit more digestible, you know what I mean? Right. Don't have the enzymes. Their gallbladder's not producing enough bile to break that down. That's why they often have difficulties when they transition at first. So then I started to have fish. And honestly, Tracy, I couldn't get enough into me. <laughs> it, was like, it was like the ravenous. You know? um, I de depleted myself and deprived myself for so long. Still brings tears to my eyes, really, that because it was like divine intervention it really was and um and i'm so grateful for that because god knows what would have happened to me then but anyway then i was able to have some poultry chicken and and i was just eating heaps i couldn't get enough i thought something wrong with me <laughs> um, and things start to change rapidly um, so not only had I the, the autoimmune condition, but I'd also developed insomnia. It would, that would have brought me to my knees because a lot of autoimmune fibromyalgia, you can't, you can't drop off to sleep. You're exhausted, but you just can't sleep. And, uh, and you dread nighttime coming. You know? So that started to change. I actually started to have deeper periods of sleep, you know, not just two hours and waking up. Uh, bladder problems I was going to the you know the toilet regularly and kidney problems and my acupuncturist also said my kidneys were so weak um, so that reduced that was down from four times a night to something like once right and I'm wow <laughs> this is just from the fish and chicken you know that it started to have an effect yeah so that's how you implement your carnivore diet, sort of? That's yes, like that's how I started to transition more and more and more. And the more research I did, um, the more uh, stories I listened to, uh, I thought all these things that were happening to me were just so common in vegans. And, of course, I started then, I had my own YouTube channel. And once I started having these incredible reversals i mean i've got a list that goes on and on but the main you know the first, i started talking about it and interviewing other people but one of the things happened with my teeth and almost within a week was this incredible tension that i think it had contributed to ten, teeth clenching through the night too that i wasn't aware which had loosened the teeth a little because this how i lost them my immunity was weak so bacteria had gone in even though i was really diligent with tooth hygiene you know and uh and of course it started infection and i didn't want to do root canals at all so i decided to have them extracted which was pretty traumatic you know big moles you know it is dramatic um i haven't had them placed yet but 
um, because again, everything was just costing a lot of money. But um, mm. that tension disappeared in about two weeks. I couldn't believe it. And I've talking to other ex-vegans, they've found that they've had this tension, tightness that's gone. And I think that contributes to a lot of sinus difficulties with people and infections. And um, so the, the teeth in themselves became more anchored in the gum. They became stronger. And I was just blown out, you know, and I didn't get, I wasn't getting any plaque around, you know. At that time, initially, of course, I was still having plants because, you know, it's hard to break it. And I, I kind of would add a little tiny bit of fish and meat, uh, chicken. Um, I got onto pork a bit, but that wasn't taking up the whole plate. I was still trying to make it look okay. Yeah. And it was very difficult at first, Tracy, you can imagine having had, uh, been seen as a bit of a vegan influencer, you know. Uh, I got such a backlash from people, mm -hmm. shocking backlash from vegans, you know. So that kind mm -hmm. of shut me down a bit, you know. But most of the healing work uh, took place last year. It was um, about 15 months of it. And I mentioned to you to um, to, you know, it's during the actual interview that I went through a lot of months of oxalate dumping. Um, and again, I didn't know what a lot of that was. And I thought, you know, I had a lot of kidney pain and bladder pain. One night I was just broken up with this pain. I was convinced it was the meat. <laughs> the meat's doing it. It's right. You know, I better go back to being vegan, you know. That happened several times. Um, but as it turned out, um, after about three or four days of this pain, it just disappeared. And, I, and actually the back pain, everything was better. So it was almost mm -hmm. like I'd hit some crisis or oxalates were coming out. And after I did a bit of listening to Sally Norton and a few other oxalate experts, um, mm -hmm. I, she said, this is, this is what happens, right? And this is from <laughs> green smoothies and... Oh yeah, I was having green smoothies nearly every day since 2000, you know, 2000 and three or something you know so it was it was yeah it was a lot that had accumulated and I I just didn't think how that could be real these these uh detox kind of symptoms of oxalates but I went through it myself and I thought this, this is real you know and I even had these little bits of grit for my eyes for about two days I felt gritty and then I'd just get my finger in the corner and I'd pick out these little tiny bits of like you know, glass-like shards. I was like, oh, this is bizarre, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's very real, that's for sure. A lot of aching. And I'm very, very blessed that I just kept the faith and kept pushing through because I know a lot of vegans, when they have some of this oxalate dumping and, and they're just a transition, mm -hmm. they can give up, you know. you just got to push through because mm -hmm. it is better on the other side. So gradually I took out more plants and um, I just got down to having very low oxalate, like, um, you know, cucumbers. They were fine with me. They weren't bloating. But it's interesting because once we take out these things and then maybe add a bit in, we actually start to see. And, and that's why uh, carnivore is brilliant as a reset and uh, an elimination uh, way of eating initially, you know, for people who've really come from full-on veganism, you know, uh, to isolate what foods are really causing you inflammation that you think are good for you, that are actually healthy. And it's not until you take them completely out and add them in. And, of course, most people will have leaky gut big time. And so often down the track, they, uh, you know, I can, I'm eating now probably 95%. And I have a very small amount of, like, avocado or sauerkraut occasionally. It's homemade. Or, um, um, what else? Yeah, cucumber, if I feel mm. like it. And it doesn't have any effect on me like it used to, you know, cause bloating mm. and all that. So I think you've got to heal your gut. It's just brilliant for that, you know. Mm. But certainly um, busting these myths about meat being toxic and uh, causing inflammation is a huge one for people to get over. But there's nothing like direct experience to smash all that, right? right. So... 
So that's what I did. And I'm, I'm a person who goes down the rabbit hole. I'm a big researcher. I'm a detective, really. Uh, that's why I do the work I do with Colin, you know, digestive things. I want to find solutions and I go into everything. And I, I, I use my body as a kind of laboratory, you know. Do you eat red meat now? Or? I do. So, um, and just quickly, that took me 15 months to eat red meat. And the red, eating red meat was a game changer for me. Um, totally big game changer. Um, I couldn't believe it. Uh, again, I was apprehensive about it digesting, but it digested brilliantly. And I gave it that extra bit of time to get the, you know, the enzymes back. And, and your body's got those. You've already got um, hydrochloric acid and pepsin and amylase and vegans to say we're not meant to digest meat well why we why have these enzymes that break down meat you know right. highly uh, volatile enzymes so anyway that all worked and so the red meat was a game changer i actually started to have more energy i got through that whole period um of the detoxing and so forth and now it's 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 incredible my digestion is brilliant um it did take a little while an adjustment and i had to find that i needed more fat I wasn't having a lot of fat at first. Uh, again, because it's brainwashing, you know. I told them, oh, I don't have fat now. I found out that that's contributing to heart disease and obesity and all these other things. And, of course, it's not true. So the more fat I had, I found that I filled out. Oh, my goodness. So I, I reversed sarcopenia. And so sarcopenia is a, it's a huge thing. And I actually now, uh, I like to say I specialise now in a way, because I know as someone who's older how important it is to keep your ma muscle mass as you get older. And I saw what happened with my my, 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 family, my father in particular had an accident, lost his muscle mass and lost his independence straight away. And, of course, now we're finding out that muscle mass is implicated more in having um, good hormones, um, mental and cognitive, retaining those mental and cognitive abilities, and really important. So... I'm thrilled. I've got muscle on now. <laughs> People say I look so much healthier, you know. Wow. So um, certainly has been a godsend. And, um, yeah, so now I, I, I eat nose to tail. I like to have organ meats. And, uh, I find, and I've always loved liver, so it hasn't been a problem for me. And uh, it's, it's wonderful. It really is. So, yeah, so that's Basically, and I don't see myself changing because I think the older you get, um, like I said, people need protein. They tend to be told to cut it down, but we do need it. Mm -hmm. And um, I certainly uh, want to keep my independence, keep my strength, keep my mental uh, faculties. And that's one thing. Since when I did start eating red meat, my brain fired up something incredible. I loved it because I got to the point too where I'd be consulting with people and I, I couldn't retrieve information or like simple things i just have this blank and that was distressing me big time um and that's changed I, you know and i just want to say to vegans if only they knew uh, how all this stuff what they're what they're experiencing is not normal if they're thinking it's aging or thinking it's you know detoxing work it's not and um you know a lot of uh, alzheimer's dementia and all that is um, I believe, um, increased through a vegan diet. You know, I'm seeing that with vegetarians around me. They, they, they're, they're more reactive emotionally too. That's another thing. I'm a lot more able to cope with stress. It doesn't have that effect on my body where all my um, fight-flight mechanisms are, are lit up. Um, my sleep's amazing. Um yeah, so, you know, I do a bit of tweaking some days if I, you know, and bowel movements are, are good. Initially, at first, they were, that took a bit of adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but now they're great. Um, I was going for long periods of time about, like, when I say long, for me, it'd be about five days or something. But now I go nearly a day, which is wonderful. Right. So, so, so it's that adjustment period. And, and look, all I can say is we are programmed, uh, not programmed, we're biologically made to eat meat and I discovered that so um, and we do thrive the best so so do you think all of your symptoms or your different problems have healed totally totally I mean people noticed a difference straight away with me first of all that I wasn't as reactive emotionally I was more grounded um I could I was more conversing conversing with people I could just easily have information come to me I wasn't, <laughs> I'd try and cover it up and just, you know, and your confidence increases. 
Mm -hmm. And as a woman, my hormones, my hormones are amazing. Like, uh, well, my breasts actually lifted, they really got better. All my, uh, everything's flowing, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Everything is great. And I think uh, a lot of women who get past menopause or through menopause think that that's normal. And of course, they're told to cut back their meat consumption as they get older. Yeah. And I, I know that that, that just messes with their hormones and thyroid and everything but but also um you know uh, that's what makes a woman womanly and keeps that as i get older you know right so that's all functioning really well and the main thing of course is our brain and i think meat is just fires it up and of course you know we know that there's so many nutrients missing in a vegan diet that you cannot get and as much as they want to convince you that you can get iron from spirulina and iron from barley grass no it's not available to the body otherwise i wouldn't have been getting these episodes of anemia you know and anemia is so common in people now particularly your elderly elder i can talk about elderly people you know uh, and sarcopenia like i said but anemia is just rampant and um so Girl, women, get your red, get into the red meat, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and not only that, Tracy, it's a lot more economical. I'm not spending anywhere the amount on supplements. I just don't even use them now. You know? Initially, I did have more magnesium and potassium because I was trying to work out that electrolyte balance and then the fats. But I kind of got it all worked out now. And, uh, and this is how I help other people get that, go through that transition. You know, and listening to their own body again. I think that's another thing that I really impress upon people is your body is so intelligent. It's trying to tell you these things. You know, once you've been on a, a vegan or even just short-term fruit and vegetables, you, think, you know, it's a great for a cleanse, but then you get the, the message. You crave these, you know, it might be fish. You might be craving a steak. And, and instead of ignoring it, it's your body saying, okay, we've done with that. We want building foods now. So this is it. I think people just ignore a lot of their own inner intelligence. Do you know what I mean? Right. I um, agree. I think that um, it's so incredible to us. And that's why we do these success story podcasts so we can let people know. And we're just so excited about it because we have seen the change in our own lives. So it's really wonderful to share. And, and your story is incredible. Thank you so much, Katya. Thank you so much for having me on. And I'm just, um, uh, as I said, my wish is that it helps many people who are struggling, particularly with the mindset, um, and just to listen to their own bodies. And if you are getting the uh, the message to eat meat and you are salivating at something that you know, as a vegan, well, it's your body saying, yes, it needs that right now. So listen to it. Thanks again, Tracy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katya. Bye-bye. Okay,